Disneyland is kind of the foundation for everything in the game. Finding a place that everyone knows, everyone understands, everyone has been to and has feelings about, that was really important to me, that we sort of suck people in with the familiar and then sort of turn everything upside down. If Walt Disney was going to bring into existence a world for forgotten and rejected characters, what form would it take? It's going to be his fondest dream, which is to build this park where adults and kids can experience joy together and where his characters, his creations, can live forever. In that sort of imaginary creation, it wasn't born fully formed. It wasn't perfect. It was incomplete. And so Oswald, its first inhabitant, had to finish it. He sort of has a sense that there's this thing out there, this park, this beautiful place, you know, a place of magic. And so he's trying to recreate it as best he can, but he's never seen it. He's got old photographs and blueprints and stuff to work from. So this was essentially taking that same aspect of the cartoon characters who are forgotten or rejected and applying it to Disneyland. So rides that are rejected, animatronics that are rejected, shops that are rejected, pretty much anything that was in Disneyland or was even considered for Disneyland ended up becoming part of Wasteland. Disneyland has a lot to teach game designers. It, it's pretty incredible. The way the place is structured with a hub and spokes and transition areas that take you out of one place and, and sort of ease you into another one. We kept looking at all of the little